Now, same thing was going on right there in, in Corinth. The question was different, and the setting was different. The same thing, though. Paul's letter here is actually answering some questions that the Corinthian church wrote to him. And one of the questions was this. Paul, is it okay for us to eat meat that was sacrificed to some of these pagan gods? I don't know how to deal with that, Paul. Can you give me some insight from God's word? Because here's the thing, man. Something in God's word, some things are not explicit. It doesn't say, you shall not do this. You shall not do that. But implicitly, implicitly, there's, as you study God's word, you see it. And so they're, they're kind of, this is kind of a gray area, Paul. Can you, can you expound on this gray area? Because here's what was happening. A lot of these now, picture this culture was basically a very polytheistic culture. There, there was the, the Greek god of this and the god of the sun and the god of the moon and all these different gods. And what they would do, they would actually make these little idols. They have like these little wood carved idols representing a certain god. And people would literally go to this sun god or whatever and they'd bow down. They'd have a priest that would work for that sun god or whatever, they take an animal and kill that animal and sacrifice it to this sun god or what have you. Now, the way they looked at it, that's, that sun god, after that animal was killed, that, that, that sun god would consume the spirit of that animal. And then the priest that actually offered that idol would take, you know, a couple, couple pork chops or a couple, you know, whatever, a couple other ham hocks off that, a couple filet mignons real quick. But the rest of that meat would be available at low discount Costco prices in the market. And so me as a Christian back then would go, dude, I, I mean, big deal. He's offering it to some false god that doesn't even exist. That's some, that's some hot barbecue. That thing is good stuff. and I, It's cheap. I'm going to roll over to the idol's temple. And instead of going to the other market, then i got to pay, you know, exorbitant. Fresh market prices, or you know, what are these? Some of these, some of these, uh, you know, what I'm talking about fresh market. What's the other one? Uh, Whole Foods, yeah. And some of these prices, I'm not going there. Go to Costco. But what was happening is some of these people that were involved in this pagan uh, idolatry and these false god worship now had become believers, and they were fresh from that. There's, they'd only been walking with Christ a couple months. And they're seeing some of the elders in the church and some of these other, these Christians that are eating, they're going, they're walking right to the idol's temple. Yeah, give me a, some rack ribs, let's, 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 let's roll. And they're buying it. And now these, these people that had just come to Christ from that very temple are going, don't you know they're sacrificing it to these idols? You can't do that, man. So they're writing to Paul. And you know who's writing to Paul and asking this question? It's the, it's the mature believer that's been walking. And they know, hey, that's no big deal. But some of these other Christians are, are tripping on us because we're going ahead and using this liberty that we have to eat this barbecue that's cheap. In my mind, it's no big deal. But you know what's happening? Those younger believers that had just come to Christ from that serving those pagan gods, they're stumbling, man. They're having a hard time with it. 1 Corinthians 8. Look at that. Verse 1. Do you see the connection? 1 Corinthians 8 and 1. Now, concerning things offered to idols, we know that we all have knowledge, but knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. And if anyone thinks that he knows anything, he knows nothing yet as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, this one is known by him. Pause right there. So what is he saying? He's saying, you know what? We have knowledge. We understand it's no big deal. Us mature believers, we know that this, these foreign gods, they're, they're all they're false. They don't really exist. I don't have any problem with it. But that knowledge sometimes, it puffs up. You ever notice that? Someone, oh, I have all, I'm a Mr. Know-it-all, and I, I, can, I have no problem with this, and I'm super spiritual, and it just puffs up. It's hot air. He says, even though you have that, that without that love, that puffs up and that leads to pride. But love, coupled with knowledge, that's going to be edifying. And we need to walk in that. 
Verse 2, if anyone thinks that he knows anything, he knows nothing. You ever notice that? The, the head knowledge without the hard knowledge? There's that disconnect. It's the Christian that's been, he knows the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. He can quote scripture. But you know what? He's speaking out of spiritual pride and not out of love. The Bible says in Ephesians 4 and 15, for you note takers, speak the truth in love. And I'll just put in parentheses, not in pride, not out of anger, not out of holier than thou. Speak the truth in love. Yeah, you know what? I can, I can go ahead and do this and I can do that. But you know what? I know that other brother right there, he's, he's going to have a tough time with that. So I'm going to let love supersede right there. And I'm going to let love dictate what my actions are going to be. I like the word love. That word, again, is agape. It's our first word in our mission statement. It's falling in love with God and then loving others and allowing the love of Christ to be able to love others. That's where it starts for us. If we don't get there as a, as a church, as a ministry, as, a, as, a, as you individually, as a believer, we can't go to the next thing. It starts there. Knowledge puffs up, love edifies. Verse 4, back in 1 Corinthians 8. Now, therefore, concerning the eating of things offered to these idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, that there is no other God but one, for even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as there are many gods and many lords, yet for us, and you can underline that, for us Christians, there's one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we for him, and one Lord, you can underline that, one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and through whom we live. Pause right there. Paul saying, man, these little gods and all this kind of stuff, there's many of those. I was, uh, we had the privilege of having a good time on, I forget what night it was, maybe Friday night, went out to dinner at Roja. You guys ever been to that place? Next time you go there, uh, go use the restroom. We went to use the restroom after dinner. And um, I don't know, but when I'm teaching like a certain chapter, like I'm, oh, I'm hypersensitive to be looking for like you know, these little wooden idols and all that stuff. I'm walking into the bathroom, and like part of their decoration, these little wooden idols, like all over the place. I'm like, oh my goodness gracious, they're all over the place. Wouldn't it be crazy to be back in that day that you're walking all over, and it's just little wooden idols, and people are just bowing down, oh, you know, great, oh. Now, you didn't see people in Roja just bowing, oh, yes, right. Hey, go get the animal, let's, you know, let's cut it real quick and offer it to this little, you know, I mean, you don't see in that. Again, this was a very polytheistic culture. And you really, you, technically you think that our culture right now is mo very monotheistic. One God, right? Like it says in here. It's not the sun guys. It, no, it's, it's God. Or it's atheistic. Uh, I don't believe in God, you know. By the way, um, the atheist, deep down in their heart, they know there's a God. Just so you know. Pray for them. When they say that, they've been hurt somewhere along the way. Someone representing God, they've been hurt. Pray for them. But in today's culture, you think it's monotheistic. I'm going to submit to you it's polytheistic. There's a lot of false gods that people are serving out there. I got my um, first taste of big time other gods serving when I when I went to the NFL. My first team was the New York Jets, and I'll never forget as I got there what kind of idols I saw carved out of metal. <laughs> and you saw them. You saw the Range Rover. You saw the 500 Benz. You saw the Lamborghinis. Idol worship was going on all over the place. There was a certain guy, big time millionaire, one of the best players on the team, and I forget what he had, like a Range Rover, and you know, back then, the PlayStation was the big thing, you know, that's what shows you how old I am, you know. Uh, and we're, you know, in the back seat, he's got the screens on the, on the back seat, and everybody's playing PlayStation, going to practice, and I'm, well, one day I hop in his ride, and you know, I'm like, oh, this is dope, and you know, all right, and, getting all caught up in this scene and, oh, you know, I want, I want to have one of those one day and that kind of stuff. The very next day, now this guy was not a believer.